Bonjourno, Princey Pace. Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, all right, three, this is the third video. Uh, I'm just reading my letter to you, but I'm kind of showing you that, you know, the expressions and, uh, like, I don't know. I, I like the Facebook thing that we're doing, okay? I do. I like where we're at now. It's just that I want you to be my wife. You know, I want you to be, I want you to be here here, like with me, I want I want to not be talking to myself, you know, um, at 3.49 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> um, uh, you know, just to, to my laptop, and like, I don't know, maybe sometimes I think it actually might be better, because I can say everything I need to say, and um, and you can respond, you know, how you want to respond, but I can articulate clearly my point without being kind of talked over, but I want you here with me, okay, I want you here with me, um, yeah, like literally, like when your dad, all of Egypt, when they know we're living in our house together, and when I'm with you, I'd get to see you smile, I'd see you every day, you know, I'd get to hear you speak and laugh and be in your presence, and I'd get plenty of attention from you, I'd get to cut, kiss and hug you too, I've only seen you one time for like two seconds, the video chat, um, not counting the seven pictures, which I adore, and I, I, you're gorgeous, you're gorgeous, okay, you're beautiful, I like using the word beautiful because it's, I like your whole person. I like, you know, I like your knowledge and I like your your. I think you don't say you're wise, but I think you. Um, I don't know. You have a philosophy that works for you, and and I learn from it. And we have a lot of similar things. Happy fighter. I mean, the, the struggle. A lot. There's so many things. So I'd get to see your smile. I'd hear you speak and laugh. I'd be in your presence. I'd get plenty of attention from you. I'd get to kiss and hug you too. Um, I've only seen you for two seconds, not counting the seven pictures. <laughs> I'm repeating all this. So, I like what we are now, but I won't feel complete, like totally complete, until we're living together. That's the goal. That's the dream. That's what I, I want to do. I'm all golly, Trump's Kentucky. It's all about you. Yeah, I want you to live here, but more so I want us to be together, to make decisions together, to figure out how to coordinate our errands and schedules uh, picking up, dropping kids off at the school, hanging out with our friends, finding a place that complements your love of languages and culture, etc. I want to do this with you. I want to figure out the world together and to be fighting side by side with you. And and we'll get into arguments. You know, I think we'll get into arguments and we'll we'll work through them. I mean, that's 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 what you do, right? You work you work through them. However, however it works. So us being together. It is the fuel to my fire. You're my life source. You know, with without you, I, I would have to rely on something else. But I don't want to. I don't want to rely on anything else or anybody else. I, I just want you. That's it. That's all I want. And I also don't want to put too much pressure on you for anything, okay? Not right now. Not right now, at least. In my education class, the professor who's the principal for uh, Manual High School, the best school in all of Louisville, now, now, I'm excited about this class. I said that students can learn better when they're expected. The principal said that uh, students learn better when they're expected to learn. So when you go into class and you expect them to learn, they learn better. They're trying to make, you know, the professor happy. So if you're expecting them to do work and they do it, then, you know, they would expect to get the praise or the attention that, that they're seeking. So to expect people is a way to encourage them to, um, you know, to learn the material that, the, that they're teaching. So I think this is correct. Um, for life to work, I think there's got to be some things that are certain. Like for the bus to come on time, for food and water to be available to the population. And when you understand predictable outcomes, that's the outcomes you can base your life around. When I know the bus is going to be there, I can wait out for the bus and make sure I can get to work because of it. You know, So I don't know about expectation. I don't know if I should have no expectations or I... I, I don't think I should let the expect, expectation drive me, okay? Um, but I, I, I just don't know about it. That's, that's all I'm going to say about expectation. Um, also, just like with my quest to be a man, I want to become a better man. I want to become a more perfect man. I also want to become a better couple, right? So this is a dialogue that's, that hopefully, hopefully we have for the rest of our lives. So I feel like until that day comes, until we actually are living together, until I get all of you, you know, and not just your, your written thoughts, that I'll always feel like I'll get the short end of the stick with your attention. And, I'll, and I will continue to be jealous of every street child you hug, every stranger in the subway who gets to see you and be around you, everybody you encounter. 
Really, and I'd wonder if they know or understand how close that they were to a princess, a real live Egyptian goddess. You know, uh, Nefertiti, an Arab tongue Nefertiti. Jasmine, the desert rose. And I've been wondering which virtue that I think is best. I've been just, something I think in my own mind, like freedom, love, or happiness. I always feel like those virtues, you know, compete for each other. Because I feel like with love, you can find freedom through love. Um, I feel like happiness is it's in the Constitution, pursuit of happiness, right? You always want to be happy. But freedom. <laughs> I love freedom. Freedom is, that's me. I mean, I feel like I love freedom. And I choose freedom over the other three, between freedom, love, and happiness. Freedom is most important, not because it's, you know, better than the other ones. I think love is the best feeling, but I think freedom is absolute essential for life. And I think if you truly love somebody, you give them freedom, you know. You let them come and go as they please and do, do as they please. You can't force somebody to love you. You can't do that. So they all kind of work together, and then you're happy, you know, with love. So, but freedom. I love freedom. Freedom, freedom is wonderful. It's a beautiful, delicious gift. Without freedom, one cannot exist authentically, okay. All human beings desire freedom. It's one of the few things that we all know about all human beings. So true happiness and true love can't happen without freedom. Freedom doesn't guarantee happiness and love, but it can't happen without it. Okay? So you can be free. That doesn't mean you'll get love and happiness. But without freedom, you don't feel exi you know, you're not authentically human. And if you're not authentically human, you can't have real love. You can't have real happiness. So true love and true happiness can't happen without freedom. Freedom doesn't guarantee it. Uh, it can't happen with without. So this this all this is all Paulo Freire's pedagogy of the oppressed, which I agree with, and I think is awesome. And it it's like an epiphany. It opened up my eyes. Absolutely, just blew me away. A quote that I I like um, about Paulo Freire. Well, actually, I got the quote later on. But Paulo Freire he says that only the oppressed, only from the oppressed can the oppressor and the oppressed be free. So the power is in the oppressed to free both the oppressor and the oppressed. The oppressor and the oppressed are locked in this hierarchy which both fear of leaving. So the oppressor and the oppressed don't want to get out of this relationship that's hierarchical. For the oppressed, there's a fear of freedom. Uh, for the oppressed, they don't, they don't know what it would be like to be free, to go out there and make their own choices and decisions. Um, to, you know, to take their licks, to, to take whatever it is society gives them and just be like, well, I'm free, so that's what I want to do. The oppressor, their fear is not having somebody to control. So they both have this fear of freedom. They have, both have this fear of not wanting to break away from um, their hierarchical relationship, their master-slash-slave relationship. For the oppressor, it's the fear of not having somebody to control. The quote is the oppressor's who oppress and exploit and rape by virtue of their power, cannot find in this power the strength to liberate either the oppressed or themselves. Only the power that springs from the weakness of the oppressed will be sufficiently strong to free both. Only the power from the weakness of the oppressed. Only the oppressed can liberate both the oppressed and the oppressor. Only the oppressed can do that. So without freedom, uh, freedom is wonderful. Without freedom, a human being can't exist authentically just to feel alive. One must be free. But freedom isn't a gift. Freedoms, no one can give you freedom. If you have to ask a person to be free, you'll never be free. Freedom is something you take. It's a conquest. You have to go for it. You've got to grab freedom. And it requires courage to grab freedom. You need happiness. You need freedom to be happy and to have love. You need courage to display freedom. So just to feel alive, right? Just to feel alive, one's got to be free. Just to feel authentically human. So you, freedom is a necessary condition for life. And freedom, again, doesn't guarantee you happiness or love. But without the foundation of freedom, true love and true happiness cannot be. So, I don't know. I don't know. I know that I love your love, and I appreciate you just being as yourself. So, no, I don't doubt your love. I know you love me passionately and deeply and warmly. You send in hugs. 
your your sending me kisses. I know you love me. I know you love me. I love you. I I love you. I care. I care a lot about you. So yeah. I love you, Mogali. And uh can we like can we like wait a couple days before we fight again? <laughs> I just I mean, everything's great, yeah, yeah, we're, we're like, um, the notebook, right, we're arguing, but, like, I liked it when I was feeling, like, real happy, you know, I was like, I'll never be unhappy, and I was like, oh, shit, yeah, anyways, love you, Arab Tongue, Nefertiti, my Egyptian queen, Isis, my Desert Rose, Love, love, something else I know about love. <laughs> I'm never, I'm never, I'm not gonna leave. This ain't gonna leave. You'd have to push me away um, in order to go. Um, but the, um, I don't know, the little prince, the little prince had talked about love, so that's kind of another inclination that I have about love. And when the the rose was saying that you know it's it's their thorns can attack anybody and how it needed. I don't know, she's kind of said something conceited, and it wasn't accurate, and the little prince took it serious, and he, he left to try to make it better for his rose, but he realized that he was too young and naive to know how to love, and so instead of kind of taking her, um, you know, her, uh, I guess, cockiness, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it was, you know, she said something that wasn't exactly true, so instead of accepting um, what it is that she was trying to ex ex express, he instead, you know, found the underlying meaning. What did it, why, why is she saying the things that she's saying? Why, you know, um, is she doing what she's, you know, I don't know, why, why is she saying the things that she's saying? And do I need to, um, react? You know, do I need to agree with it, go along with it, or do I need to kind of go to my side of self and be like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't leave, you know? And no, I, I don't think I should leave, like, ever, like, Ever, <laughs> so yeah. And you're my rose. You're I'm the little prince, and you're my rose that grew out of the desert. All right, I'm all golly. I love you.